Hi, thank you for joining us today. I'm Corey Keysweater, joined today by Justin Crowley, and we're going to be walking through the Insights dashboards uh, or the Insights feature within Force Point One. Now, Force Point One is the unified security platform in the cloud from Force Point. It's the industry's most flexible single vendor SASE solution providing converged capabilities for ZTNA, CASB, and SWIG services, along with best-in-class DLP and advanced threat protection, as well as our FlexEdge secure SD-WAN. This is all built on a um, auto-scaling architecture on AWS that allows it to scale up or down according to demand anywhere around the world without worrying about physical infrastructure constraints. This also leads us to be able to boast of 99.99% uptime with no scheduled downtime. We're constantly running uh, and able to support your organization anywhere in the world. Now, the insights dashboards that we are bringing to customers, I'm very excited to show the, the first page, which you can see a little um, part of a screenshot of right here, is the summary dashboard. Now, this isn't necessarily for the admins who are using uh, Force Point One on a day-to-day -day basis. This is gonna be more like an executive report that they would show up to the uh, CISO and CIO level, or indeed possibly to the board. Um, three main categories or three main um, metrics on this dashboard cover things like a uh, holistic uh, data exposure on the on the left hand side we're looking at um, either dlp or malware events that are triggered um, by inspection for data at rest or data in motion across uh, the use of um, SaaS applications and the web in the middle we have a a quick intuitive metric that allows us to get a, an understanding of how deployed, how much are we leveraging the Force Point One platform? We call this the Force Point Security Index. It is composed of five key areas, mainly looking at SWIG protection or, or web security, CASB API protection or your um, data at rest protection for cloud apps, CASB inline protection, the data in motion and use of unmanaged uh, devices to access those cloud applications, as well as overall user logins and agent scene. This helps us get a quick determination of how much of the organization is using the platform, how much of our um, workloads actually going through this, and, and how much risk we're preventing, as well as associated um, return on investment tied to dollar amounts of um, data protected, for example. Now, again, I mentioned these are the kind of top level dashboard views, but they, the main focus for our admins will probably be on the discover mode. And, and Justin will be walking us through that in more detail. Um, but suffice it to say, discover mode is where you can pull in any metric from any of the Force Point One security services to correlate and view on a regular basis. So you can save these as widgets and come back to them uh, constantly as you need without having to recreate reports. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Justin to walk us through a, uh, a demo of these capabilities. Awesome, thank you, Corey, I appreciate that. So as Corey mentioned, this is Force Point One Insights, right? And the one of the big requests when it comes to cloud security is reporting, right? Customers want to know what is my SSC solution doing? And to me, I think Force Point One Insights has, has knocked it out of the park here. And one big focus that we have here is, you know, the summaries page, which is the first page that you log into once you get into the solution. And as Corey mentioned, this is our executive summary. And I, I, I love this page because, again, it's showing the organization, again, what are the benefits of our solution, right? And you can see right off the start, we're able to see, you know, how many users are violating policies? How much sensitive data am I protecting? Am I seeing any malware? What web threats? And the nice thing that we have our, our full unified, you know, our data for SASE solution, it's all about the data. And that's why right off the start, we can see where am I protecting sensitive data? And with our solution, especially our CASB, being a multi-mode CASB, right? There's different channels for us to inspect data in motion through a proxy, data at rest through, uh, through your cloud APIs. And you can see on the screen here, we give you that insight, right? Hence, Force Point One Insights. I'm able to say, here's the data that I'm protecting from a cloud data storage. And this is where we're looking at the API, controlling your data at rest. 
how much data am I controlling through the web channel? We all know the web is a great place for users and organizations to get information to do their job, but it's also a risky area. So now within our solution, I can now see what data is traversing back and forth through the web, through the web channel. And then we also have our, our proxy. And what's One. cool as well down at the bottom, we can now see, you know, how much, how many policies am I implementing? What policies are actually being triggered? You know, what traffic is coming from unmanaged devices, right? With the Force Point One SSC solution, we're able to provide CASB functionality and ZTNA functionality from unmanaged devices. So now I can look how many policies are being implemented or being enforced from unmanaged devices. And we all know shadow IT is a big thing, unsanctioned apps. What apps are my users using that I haven't really approved? And now I can see on the bottom right-hand side of the screen there, what apps am I seeing that I haven't been approved? And I can now look into those apps and then create policy based on those to be able to, to block them. And Corey also mentioned you know, the return on investment. Right? We all know data breaches are, are huge. Data breaches cost a lot of money. So from a compliance standpoint, how am I doing against the industry or compared to, uh, to the industry when it comes to my data breaches? Right. So as we can see on the screen here, we give some insight into to those details as well. And one thing I, I just wanted to point out, one thing that I love about this main summary page here, you're not going to see this from other solutions in the same space. I haven't seen anything like this from other SSE or SASE solutions. And one thing is, I, I think it really rings true with our mantra of security simplified. I mean, I've never met a security admin or IT admin that has just a ton of extra time to focus on something like, um, for example, putting together risk quantification, actually quantifying yeah. the risk. This view in one place, typically a, a normal organization with, with um, you know, 50, 100 plus tools, they have this uh, visibility fragmented and piecemealed all over the place. And then you have to go buy additional tools to gather and aggregate all this data and sometimes buy additional tools. So you buy a SIM tool to aggregate it and then you buy an additional, maybe you're trying to get towards SOAR. And so you buy another analytical tool to go on top of the SIM for, especially if you're in the mid-size, um, mid-market uh, space and you don't have a huge IT team, you've got it all in one place. You don't need to have a full-time employee whose job or, or a big part of their responsibility is cobbling together disparate telemetry from a hundred different places to give a rough uh, quantification of risk. You've got it all in one place. And the more you leverage the platform, the more traffic you have going through Force Point One, the more of your resources that are protected with Force Point One, the more of a complete view you have of risk across the organization. Well, and that's huge. You know, you mentioned it right there with, you know, mid-market, right? And that's a, a great customer um, or ideal customer for us where, again, they may not have the resources. We know SIMs are great, right? They do a great job, but they're not easy to manage, right? You have to have teams. You have to have socks dedicated to that. A lot of organizations don't have that time. They don't have those resources. So here's where Force Point uh, One Insights comes into play, being able to leverage all that data. And not only that makes sense of it, right? And that's the big thing is taking all this telemetry is great. I see, you know, X, Y, and Z in this dashboard. What does it actually mean? What does that mean from a logistics standpoint? What does that mean from, in our case, you know, the return on investment? And again, this is just the summary page, right? We haven't even got into all the custom dashboards. So again, we talk about simplicity, being able to log into insights and to show your executive team from one single page, here's how many users are violating policy. Here's how much data we have protected. Here's how much malware we have protected and be able to drill down into those details is, is quite huge. And then simplicity. When we, when we talk force point one, we talk how we have a single pane of glass, a unified policy. Well, we're now doing the same thing when it comes to, uh, to reporting. I mean, depending on the size of your organization and your needs, in lieu of a full-fledged SOC team, this could be your SOC in a box. <laughs> yeah, SOC, SOC in a box. That's that's perfect, especially when you're looking at, you know, the whole SASE and SSE landscape here. It's all about consolidation. So if you think about now Force Point One Insights, I now have CASB data coming to it. 
I have ZTNA data, right? I have secure gateway data. I may have, you know, SD-WAN data coming into it. So I have all these different channels from a cloud perspective, all in one single solution, right? We know everything is starting to move to the cloud, right? We're starting to see all the data. My users are now, as we all know, users are now not fully uh, remote as we're now getting back to more of a, a hybrid approach with some people coming back to the office, but we're not 100% back in the office. And I don't think, I think everybody can agree we're not getting to that, right? So cloud is more crucial than ever. Look at, I said the SSC space here. So being able to have one single, um, you know, reporting capabilities or one single, you know, um, channel here to be able to pull in all this data is huge. And it all comes back to uh, the simplicity, right? Forcepoint in general is here to simplify security. And to me with insights, there, there's no doubt that this has completely simplified um, cloud reporting. Now, as we mentioned, there are multiple dashboards within the solution. Again, all this time that Corey and I have been talking, we're just on the summary page, right? We can jump down into data security. We can go into threat protection. So I go into data security, again, data for SASE, you know, data is a hot commodity now, right? And so now I can look at my policies. How many DLP policies am I enforcing? So I can see also trends. This is just my little tenant here, so I don't have too many trends here, but I can now see, okay, you know, right now we're looking at the last 30 days. I can go back to the last seven days. I can go to 14 days, 30, 45, or even 60. So if I jump to 60 days, I can say, okay, great. In the last 60 days, how many policies have been enforced? I can now look at any trends that are going back and forth here. So I have the ability to say, you know, from a uh, zero trust standpoint, you can see now here, right? Obviously, because I just created my tenant, my policies have gone up, but you'll notice that my uh, triangles are, are red here. Well, obviously, if my DLP enforcement has gone up, that's probably a bad thing because that means more of my users are hitting policy where I can see, hey, items scanned. Well, that's probably a good thing. That doesn't mean that they trigger DLP to get blocked. It just means we're scanning those. And I can see the data that I'm protecting, right? I can get into my action summary. Okay, great. I'm triggering DLP. But what am I actually doing to that, right? And if you watched any of our other videos around Force Point One DLP, You'll see the different types of actions that we can apply, block it, copy it, encrypt it. Did I allow it? Was it quarantine? From a channel perspective, I can look at from a proxy standpoint. You know, if I look at my data cloud storage, hey, I can see my data at rest isn't really triggering DLP as much. I can see through the web, hey, that's great. I'm not seeing as much data um, trigger DLP through the web. So I know my users from a personal file storage or um, social media, I'm not seeing much data going back and forth there. So that's great but I can see most of it's coming through the proxy. So that's coming through my CASB, right? Now I can get down into, you know, where is this coming from? Is it coming through files? Is it emails that I'm scanning? What patterns am I triggering the most? So DLP patterns, those are our objects. Is it malware? Is it uh, social security numbers, credit cards, whatever it may be? I can now even drill into that. So all these features, and the nice thing is, in a, later in this video, we're going to get into how we can customize dashboards. But all these details are here by default. I didn't have to come in here and say, okay, what data do I want to look for? What widgets do I want to add? This is all here by default for you. Now, I can add my own dashboards, and we're going to get into more details. But this is all out of the box. To me, Corey, this is, is pretty cool to be able to have all these details. When we talk about mid-market, again, sometimes they don't even, you're not even sure, even, even if you don't look at mid-market, you look at any organization, they're not even sure what to look for. You know, great. Hey, what should my widgets be? So I think these dashboards take a lot of the guesswork out, right? Being able to go down and just, hey, who are my users violating? Who are the top users? I can see, hey, my admin user. Wait a second. Why is this user having 2,600 violations when the closest is 103? I'm going to drill down and work with this user and find out what's actually going on. But all of these different widgets that we have out of the box to give you, again, I'm using that insights word, right? So there's a reason why we called it Force One One Insights, is all the insights we can give you into your data, into the threat, into your user behavior, to then find out what is actually happening in my organization when it comes to a cloud access, when it comes to cloud data control. To me, this is, is pretty huge. And this is delivering just straight out of the box something that is actually quite hard to get a consistent view of yeah. data 
violations and data security across the organization. And if uh, for those that are familiar with Forcepoint's data security side, that we hang our hat on our best of breed data security capabilities, and we can you know extend from those the enterprise DLP through the Forcepoint One channels um, and and continue to augment data security capabilities. But just starting with Forcepoint One uh, and what's included in Forcepoint One and in, included in Insights or excuse me, insights is included as well, um, but also the, the DLP patterns that are out of the box. We've got a, a larger breadth of compliance patterns out of the box. So for those organizations that don't have a full-fledged team just for data security that may not know how to set up regex um, policies for certain things, hey, we've got them out of the box. You can just start applying those for the three Ps, you know, PCI, PHI, PII, that everybody wants to cover. That's, hey, you can streamline that regulatory compliance, but we also have things out of the box to go beyond that, to help, uh, we have additional capabilities to help with things like intellectual property, which is a whole different animal and something that it is required to, for your own uh, organization to maintain your competitive advantage and even keep the lights on, you've got to maintain protection around that sensitive intellectual property, the secret sauce that runs your organization. Because if that goes out, that's your competitive edge. That's that's the secret sauce. That's It could be the, the schema, the source code for what runs your product. You need a consistent view across the whole estate to be able to identify any leaky holes where, where something might have the chance of exfiltrating and be able to patch it with stronger data security policies. We are the one-stop shop when it comes for um, that kind of data security perspective. And again, this is just the second page that we're looking at yeah. is, is giving that consistent view uh, across yeah. data security. Well, and, and also to um, what I like is it's making sense of the data, right? It's not just alerts and that's where, where some solutions you know, great, I can create an alert that Corey triggered a certain policy and I get those alerts 24 seven, people are triggering policy. That's great, but how do I make sense of that? How do I look at trends? How do I look at any patterns? Is this a, is this, is this a concern? Am I seeing, you know, the following users always doing certain tasks? Because over a week, I may get so many alerts that I don't, I myself don't see a pattern. You know, even though there is a pattern that, hey, every Wednesday at two o'clock, I get an alert from Corey. I may not notice that as an admin because I see these alerts coming through. But now I can go in here and I can see, well, yeah, wait a second. You know, over the last, let's say, you know, seven days, you know, I can look at a user. Again, this is just my, my test 10 here. So I have a couple of users, but I can now say, hey, in the last seven days, why has this admin triggered DLP 65 times? And now I can start going in to, uh, to investigate what's actually going on. I can now create my own dashboards, maybe based on that user, which we're going to get into uh, to a second here, to now say, hey, you know what? I'm going to keep a closer eye on this user. I'm going to start reaching out to them and their manager to find out, hey, what's going on? Maybe their job duties changed. Maybe this user now should have access to, um, you know, Corey mentioned the, the three Ps there. Maybe this user should have access to certain data because they're now moving from, you know, part of the organization now in HR, or they're now in the finance team. So maybe their job duties have changed and now I can go ahead and investigate and change their policy. But when it comes to the data, it's not just about your data exfiltration. What about threats, right? Malware, right? And built into the force point one solution is our advanced threat protection or ATP. So not only am I scanning your data to say, hey, Corey's uploading, you know, PII, I can now say, hey, is Corey uploading or downloading malware? Right, because we can allow BYOD, we can allow personal devices. Right, in other videos, we go into D DLP how we have we can support a wide range of devices if it's Linux, Chromebook, Windows, Mac, you name it. Because we allow personal devices, I don't know what Corey does with his computer at home. Right, so there may be malicious content on there. So if he's trying to access one of our managed SaaS applications through our Casby solution, so he's on a, a personal device, is he uploading malware into Microsoft 365? Or from a secure gateway standpoint, if he's accessing his personal file share, his own Dropbox, or his personal uh, Gmail, and he's downloading an attachment, he may not be doing this maliciously. Like we all know with most data exfiltration, it's not, it may not be malicious. So maybe Corey just downloading something from his email, not realizing there's malware in it, 
And now he's trying to download that onto a corporate device. Well, hey, Forcepoint One can scan that through Secure Gateway or scan that through even ZTNA or CASB. And now we can report on that. So I can now see, hey, wait a second, how many files have I seen? So if I change this in the last 30 days, just to get a bit more data here, how much malware am I seeing? What domains am I accessing that triggered malware? Right. When we talk about our, um, our categorization, in other videos, we talk how categorization isn't just enough. We talk about the reputation of a website. Is it risky? So as you can see here, you know, what are some risky sites that my users are accessing? Am I seeing data being downloaded from those risky websites? And again, as you can see, I can start seeing some trends. If all of a sudden I'm saying, hey, wait a second, you know, why is it every day, um, you know, every two days or every three days, I'm seeing a spike in activity? Well, now I can drill down even further, find, okay, who is this user? Is there a certain website they're accessing? Is Corey every day, again, at one o'clock trying to access his Gmail and download something? Is that something I should be concerned about? Well, and there's something else that's highlighted or that is in that chart. Um, one of the actions there, isolated. If you're an org organization that is seeing a high volume of risky destinations accessed, and especially if, da if data is being downloaded from those risky destinations, and you drill into it and you find, hey, that is a meaningful business activity, we just got to deal with the risk. Well, hey, that's a great thing to bring in something like zero trust web access, leveraging RBI and CDR to sanitize that risk, to inoculate, hey, that may be a dangerous environment, but your organization has to work with it. So for example, we see banks oftentimes um, having to access risky sites because they're uh, looking to approve loans for organizations that just stood up a new site. Um, but sometimes these could be be infected or compromised, but the loan officer still needs to do their due, dil due diligence to research it, but they don't want to expose the bank to potential malware or, uh, you know, uh, threats, APT threats, things like that. Well, you have a way of being able to do your job and mitigate the security without interrupting the flow of business. Yeah, that, that's a great point. You know, with our secure gateway, being able to do remote browser isolation, now I can see, hey, wait a second, why am I seeing so much traffic isolated? Because isolation is really around your uncategorized or your that, that gray area. Should I block it? Should I not block it? And so if I'm starting to see, again, that trend or that spike in isolation, okay, well, I know my isolation policy is just based on uncategorized or uh, you know a certain category. So why am I seeing a spike in that? Again, now I can drill down and actually make, again, make sense of, uh, of that data, see any trends, see any patterns, right? But again, I can go through here, again, what are the top websites? Why am I seeing so many categories being accessed? Why am I seeing so many risky sites? And again, who are the top users, right? What are the top groups that are accessing uh, my policy violations? So again, drill down even further into not just from a data standpoint, but from a threat protection. And those are our three out of the box dashboards. So just think of all that information that we just showcased in our executive summary page, when it comes to our data security, when it then comes to our threat protection, that's all out of the box. And to, to make it even better, this is just really the beginning. They, we yeah. are going to be seeing on average, let's say about every 45 days or so, uh, an updated, set of capabilities in here. We have a wide breadth of security solutions uh, as part of Forcepoint. You know, we have the, the best of breed enterprise DLP, the most secure SD-WAN and next-gen firewall, at least from my perspective. Um, and as we bring more of those elements into this, your capabilities expand. We are also well known, especially the people that know us for data security, know our unique differentiation with risk adaptive protection and leveraging um, indicators of behavior. As we continue to evolve this set of capabilities, we will then be able to see more of that um, basically UEBA, user and entity behavioral analytics elements brought in as well. Um, so the, the potential for what you can do with this really will uh, continue to grow like, exponentially as we bring in more parts of the Forcepoint portfolio uh, into Insights. Yeah, and so as we mentioned, those are the, the out-of-the-box um, dashboards, out-of-the-box widgets, but we understand, hey, what if I want to see more? What if, you know, from an admin standpoint, those dashboards are great for, you know, users that just want to 
just look at basic reports or just get an understanding of what's happening in the solution. But then there's certain admins or there may be certain use cases where I need to drill into data or based on those dashboards, I see, hey, you know, why is there a certain user triggering policy more? So I can create my own widgets here. So I can jump into, let's say, proxy, right? So that's my inline protection. I can go in here and I can say, you know what, a user's last name, right? I can look at, based on their user last name, how many DLP files have they triggered, right? So I can apply all that information and then start looking at my different users. Obviously, in, uh, in this lab, right, I just have a, a few users here, but I can now say, okay, great, from a proxy standpoint, so an inline protection, I want to look at a report that shows or filters, you know, based on uh, last name and file count. And then maybe I want to enter this and say, you know, again, I only have a, a few users, but maybe I just want to look at Ranger, for example, right? And now I can go ahead and apply my widget. So now that user that triggers all of my policy, I can now create a widget that will just show me, okay, this user, when they have a file count from a DLP perspective, right? And now I can go ahead and save my widget and just call this, we'll say, you know, Corey, and we'll just say file, right? So now I can save my widgets. So now in a second, when we get into our dashboards, I can show how I can apply my own widgets. But you can see how there's all these different settings that I have here when it comes to what do I actually want to see, right? So again, those dashboards that we have out of the box are great, but now I want to apply certain widgets based on that data based on those trends or based on that activity that I'm seeing, you know what, I want to have a widget or part of my dashboard that showcases certain details about that user or about that policy. Maybe I have a certain DLP um, pattern or policy that's triggered more frequently and I want to actually drill into that or get more data on that. I can now create a rule based on the action, the activity. Maybe there's a certain application that I'm seeing or maybe there's a file size or a group, you name it. I have control over all these different dimensions that I have here. And based on these dimensions, right, I can now look at DLP file. I now have all these different measures that I wanna look at. So you can see some are grayed out because once I select a different um, dimension, it then determines what actual measure I have based on that. So this is pretty cool when it comes to the customization. And again, we break it down from a proxy standpoint, maybe my data at rest, right? So depending on what I'm doing from an API standpoint, I can now create different widgets based on those details. Maybe there's some classification labels. So again, we have the, the force point uh, data classification. Hey, if something's been tagged as internal, confidential, whatever it may be, hey, let's do a widget that will show me what files have been triggered or um, tagged as internal, as confidential, whatever it may be. And now I have a widget that can display that data. So, and also to put some more context around it, let's say you have a set of applications, even split between SaaS apps and, and private on-prem applications that are used by your partner community. So maybe you've got a set of five, three in the cloud, two on-prem. Well, you can have whoever's responsible for that set of applications and the security of you know, that workflow and say, all right, here's a widget just for that person. We're gonna show these yeah. five applications and access patterns and sensitive data movement uh, associated with just those five applications in one view, regardless of which applications are in the cloud and which are on-prem, hey, we can just pull them together because guess what? All that telemetry is flowing through Force Point One, is flowing through one of the security services that is part of Force Point One. So we gather all of that telemetry and we can easily put that view together. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about the, the Discover um, tab here is it's just that it gives you ability to discover. I want to run a, a basically, I, I think of this as your reporting capabilities as well. I want to get a report. I want to get some details on a, you know, a certain criteria. Great. I see, you know, the data here, but now I want to be able to view that moving forward. And that's where we can save the widget. And where that comes in handy is we have this dashboard category. So I can create or catalog, sorry, I can create my own dashboards. So if I go to all dashboards, here's ones that me and other admins have created. So I can go ahead and create a dashboard and we'll just call this, you know, Justin's dashboard. See here, and we'll just call this, you know, test. So I can select my different layouts. Do I just want one column, two columns, three columns? So in this case, you know what, let's go ahead and create three columns. 
And again, now I can, again, change my dates. Do I want this to show 30 days, whatever the case may be? And I can now go ahead and add my different uh, widgets here. So there's the Corey widget that I created earlier. I'm going to say, you know what? I want to be able to look at actions on files. And let's just say the owner count and go ahead and add that. So again, here's my own dashboard. I can now say, you know what? I'm going to save this. I want to be able to view this at a later date. Or again, I can go in here and edit my details. But in my case, I'm going to save my dashboard here. So now if I go back to my dashboard catalog and all dashboards, there's my dashboard that I can now click on and drill into the details. Now, the nice thing is I have the ability to pin this. So I can go ahead and pin my dashboard. So now when I go back to my dashboard catalog, there's Justin's dashboard. So right off the start, I can click on my dashboard and go ahead and open this guy. So here's all of my different reports or my different widgets that I have. And again, I can drill down even further into each of these different widgets. So again, there may be certain users where, again, Corey may be you know, on the compliance team. So he's concerned about certain information. So he can create his own dashboard. Whereas the summary data security and the threat protection is more of a what's happening across my entire um, solution. Whereas now I can have my dashboards to say, great, I may have a HR compliance dashboard where it's more for our users accessing inappropriate websites. Because, you know, when everybody comes onto an organization, they sign the dotted line that says you're not going to go to in inappropriate websites on corporate devices. So, hey, maybe I have an HR compliance form or a widget that shows or any users accessing certain categories. Or maybe, you know, Corey is, you know, on probation. Who knows why he's on probation? So we want to have a bit more insight into what he's actually doing. So I'm going to have a, um, you know, as you can see my widget here, that's going to show me details about Corey that go into a bit more details. So again, you as an admin have full control over what your dashboards are going to look like. And we also have our different widget category. Again, if you want to come back into here and create your own widgets, but you'll notice that it goes to the Discover, right? Because in the Discover, it's around, I want to get some data right now. I want to be able to see what's happening or drill down into the data. And if I like that information, that's where I can save the widget. So once my widgets are saved, I now see them all in the list here. And there's my, my Corey widget. And I can go ahead and edit this or preview this widget. So I can get details on who created it. When was it created? When was it last changed? What dashboards is it actually linked to? Because say I go, I want to delete this. I want to delete this widget. Well, wait a second. I notice that it's linked to Corey's dashboard or Justin's dashboard. Or maybe I'm interested in this and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So instead of me going through and recreating this widget, I'm just going to duplicate it, right? So I have full control. And to me, this is, this is pretty powerful. Whereas, again, from a simplicity standpoint, hey, we have these dashboards out of the box, but there are times where maybe an admin wants to go a bit further. And that's where, to me, the customization and the, the data points that we have here is, is pretty phenomenal because, again, we are that, uh, that unified um, SSC solution. We have the CASB capabilities. We have the RBI, remote browser isolation, the CDR. We have the secure gateway. We have the ZTNA capabilities. We're now giving you insight into, you know, basically any user, regardless of where they are, any wherever your data is, whatever cloud app it's in, wherever, what channel it's going through. Is it on a personal device being uploaded in your SaaS applications? Is it on a corporate device being uploaded or downloaded to a personal file share? through the secure gateway, or if the user's accessing an internal application, as Corey mentioned, we now have the ability to give you insight into what's actually happening. What are trends, right? What are, what, again, it, it comes down to the, you know, the insights, right? There's a reason why they call it insights, giving you insight into the data, making sense of it. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. And again, that that's, some of the power of having a unified platform. So again, what I'm showing here is just looking at a quick overview of kind of the differentiated approach that Forcepoint takes when it comes to SASE. We are one of the few that has a single vendor SASE solution with both the security, the SSE, as well as the SD-WAN side. But again, what I've said uh, multiple times throughout this, where we hang our hat is our data first approach to SASE with the best data security across the widest range of apps, in, even from BYOD and, uh, and IoT devices. And underpinning all of this, the simplified architecture 
a fully uniform and converged architecture that is cloud native on a hyperscaler. That again is another differentiator that allows us to boast of global elastic scalability, whereas a lot of the other um, you know, leaders like us in the SSE uh, space, they're, they're not on hyperscalers. They're not cloud native. Uh, they are building out their own data centers. And so there are limitations to going with that. Whereas with us, unlimited scalability and taking it a step further in the, in the bottom center here, distributed enforcement. That means, yes, this hyperscaler cloud native wonderful architecture can enforce inspection and control in the cloud, but we also distribute that enforcement via the smart edge agent, the endpoint agent, the unified agent that covers, uh, you know, forward proxy for the web security as well as the the cloud, um, the CASV and ZTNA. Well, you can inspect and, and uh, distribute enforcement locally as close to the user, as close to the edge as possible. And we have further iterations that'll make this even stronger coming later uh, at, towards the end of this year. And the whole reason for this approach is to serve the transformative business outcomes that organizations are looking for. Especially right now, you know, in the in the face of some of the economic downturns of 2023, people are looking at what, you know, hey, I need an immediate economic value. And what SASE platforms have in common is the, at least the interest or the focus on uh, increasing productivity by allowing people to work anywhere at any time, accessing data and applications everywhere, while also being able to cut costs to streamline efficiencies by giving you one consolidated converged platform to manage it all, which allows the um, value visualization uh, from insights that we just spent this time going over. And this is why we call ForcePoint's approach security simplified. Thank you. Please um, stay in touch, follow us on uh, LinkedIn and please also reach out to us with any questions. If you're a current customer, reach out to your ForcePoint rep, have a demo of this or any of the other capabilities that we've mentioned. Or if you're not yet a ForcePoint One customer, reach out to us directly, forcepoint.com. There's uh, people manning the live chat. We can set up time for a custom um, demonstration showing any of these capabilities uh, customized to your specific environment and your specific needs. Thank you.